<laughs> Hi, everybody. How are you? Uh, it's Thursday, and yet again, yes, the small it is, back in the news. What's going on now? Well, we know that the case was dismissed. We know that the case file was sealed. Yeah, sealed, so nobody can go into the file and see where in the truth lies. He was given, catch this, 16. 15 hours of community service. I'm telling you, that's like Zippo. 16 hours of community service? Come on. I mean, I have clients that do 100, 200, 300 hours of community service uh, for lesser crimes. So, boy, talk about a whitewash. And then they took $10,000 from him, says Kim Fox, the prosecutor. And I'm thinking, really? $10,000? pocket change to Yessie, probably pulled it out in cash and gave it to him. Now, the city of Chicago is going after him for the cost of the investigation, somewhere in the hundred thousands of dollars, probably 150,000 round figures, say, and they're going after him and saying, pay it. I would guess that his attorneys would tell him, just pay it and be done with it, because if they pay it and they're done with it, then it's out of the news. I've got to tell you, this has to be looked at. Um, the feds have said they're going to take a look at it. Um, sometimes I find when the feds come in after something like this happens, there's a lot of saber rattling. And yeah, we're coming in, we're the feds, we're going to get you. It's like, come on, guys, really? If you're going to, then let's go after it. And I would imagine, at least I would hope, they're also looking at the prosecutor's office to see what happened here. Now, this Kim Fox, the prosecutor, um, interestingly enough, was mentored, at least that's what she said, in part by Senator Kamala Harris of California. They say that she would phone her, Kim Fox, the prosecutor in Chicago, who was going after Smollett, said that she would phone Kamala periodically, not necessarily on this case, but other cases, and talk to her about cases and, you know, having Kamala give her advice. Remember, Kamala was a district attorney in Alameda County, then she bounced over to SF San Francisco to become the district attorney over there. And there was quite a bit of stuff that went on there. Maybe one day we'll talk about the crime lab and the Brady, which are discovery issues that she faced while she was DA there. But let's put that aside for a second. Getting back to this case, I really do hope the feds do take a hard look at this. Will they prosecute him? He should be prosecuted. Uh, depends on what they find. The feds move at glacier speed, so don't expect them to come up with an answer for us right away. All in all, this is really wrong. And the thing that really sends me sideways is the fact that they sealed the file. Uh, the judge has spoken out and said, oh, everything was uh, copacetic here, didn't do anything wrong. But then I think it was the prosecutor that said, oops, what do you mean they sealed the file? My gosh, how did that happen? What do you mean, my gosh, how did that happen? You had to know it. So why would they seal this case? This is a case of public importance. When I was a DA, and a lot of you know, I was a DA in LA, San Francisco, and Alameda County, uh, here in California, mostly in Alameda County for 11, 12 years. And there were some cases like this that are hot button cases that come up. And as a DA, you look at it, and you go, you know what? We got cops that say he's guilty. We've got a mayor that thinks he's guilty. There are facts that prove that he's guilty. Maybe there might be a difficult prosecution here, but so what? The whole country's watching this. Get some chutzpah. Put it to a jury. And you know what happens politically when you do that as a DA or a prosecutor? You put it to the jury, you let the jury decide, and if it turns out bad, you go, hey, it wasn't me. It was the jury system that did it, not me. It was those 12 people. I mean, I hate that excuse, but I don't get why they didn't put this to a jury and do it that way. Then they couldn't be criticized. They've opened themselves to all sorts of criticism. It smells. I mean, something stinks in Denmark here, I'm telling you. They should be looked at. Something happened here and something's wrong. And don't give me, like Kim Fox says, the prosecutor, oh, well, we do this in a lot of cases. Yeah, you do, but they're not out of profile like this, and they're not these type of charges. So don't give me that baloney that we do it in other cases. Yeah, you do it in other cases where the crimes that are accused are a whole lot less. And he, com he already did the 16 hours of community service. He gives them $10,000, big deal. And uh, 
then he gets what? Nothing. He walks away from this, and then it's sealed. This is wrong. Everybody should be screaming bloody murder on this one. Um, anyway, enough about uh, Smollett or Yesi. And, oh, yeah, and then they rehire him. Unbelievable. Then Empire goes, oh, come on back. Now that they dismiss the case, come on back. You wonder where political contributions are going. I mean, it begs all sorts of questions like that. And the problem is, what a lot of defense attorneys and what a lot of courts will now hear is, well, you let him go. Why aren't you going to let me go? What? I'm not high profile enough? I mean, we hear that from clients a lot when things like this happen. Well, how come he, he got let go? How come they won't let me go? How come they won't give me 16 hours of community service? Tell you why, because you're not him. You're not in high publicity. You don't have po political connections. Something's wrong here. Something's, somebody has got to look at this, and somebody's got to pay the price for this baloney that happened back in Chicago. Well, there you got it for today. Hey, um, if there are any subjects you want me to talk about, let me know, okay? Um, I just, oh, I'll tell you a funny story. I just got out of trial in Fresno in a murder case. I'm not going to get into it too big, but if you want me to uh, in, in another chapter of this, I'll tell you about the case where my client was accused of murder one, but one of the witnesses gets on the stand and says that the victim in the case, the guy that was shot, he was unarmed, it's all on video and my client confessed to it, but interesting trial. But this woman gets on the stand and I'm cross-examining her and I'm not the gentlest of cross-examiners at times. So I accused her of perchance being high when she was with the victim an hour before he was killed and they might have been smoking or ingesting uh, some sort of intoxicant. Honest to God, here was her answer. Yeah, uh, we were smoking and bombing fluid. And I'm like, what? You were smoking what? Embalming fluid. I about fell off my chair. Now I know that he had a little P P PCP, phencyclidine in his system, uh, the victim in the case. And I thought, whoa, is she talking about PCP? But I I'm telling those things happen in court and I don't know whether to turn around and laugh or look at the jury and go, say what? What's going on here? And bombing fluid. Ever heard of that one? Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow.